Think back to your high school years. Were you laying the groundwork for the career you now have? Probably not. But some students spent this weekend doing just that. We want to introduce you to some of these up-and-coming young scientists. They were competing in last week's Canada-wide science fair. And as you'll see, these projects are not your run-of-the-mill volcano experiment. The results some of the students got could have huge implications for the world of science, not to mention for themselves. There were over 450 students from across the country at the Canada-wide Science Fair held in Kingston, Ontario. This is a place where scholarships, awards and getting a good name for yourself early are all hot commodities up for grabs. Well, when I was in grade four, I used to do the science fair with the little electromagnets and the volcanoes. And eventually I evolved to computer projects and robotics and I decided that's where I'm going to stay for the next couple of years. It seems he made the right decision. He did very well with the robot he created for this year's science fair. I used multiple different types of technology, such as wireless video, wireless data, software, and hardware. Uh, the video uh, comes from these two cameras, and they're used as the vision for the robot. Uh, the video data is sent back through the computer, and the, com the data is analyzed, such as like their two eyes, like the human eyes. And they focus on targets, images, obstacles, whatever. And the cameras are used to actually detect obstacles in front of it. Certain applications of it would be to explore territory, such as Mars or underwater, where you can't really take a human being. And there you could use this to intelligently explore the area around it. Uh, also for law enforcement, chasing criminals and cars, it would be very useful, where it can automatically follow a target. Now this is a device that might even interest U.S. President George W. Bush. Shauna Gammon wanted to produce environmentally safe energy. My project is a chemical thermocell. Now basically this is a system for converting low-grade heat directly into electricity. Uh, low-grade heat is just any day heat like from a flame from hot water um, and in my project I use this type of system I tested over 20 different solutions with two carbon electrodes in them and when there's a temperature differential between these electrodes it produces electricity now this type of system has absolutely no kind of environmental repercussions or any such things like that uh, it's completely self-sustained it doesn't use up any of the chemicals and it basically produces power just out of a temperature difference nothing more other students settled for nothing less than as far as the eye can or should we say can barely see I've been passionate by astronomy for a long time since I was in grade school I've been staring at the night sky. For his project, Francis Bulva looked into wolf rayet stars. They're hot, massive, luminous stars, three times the size of our own sun. Well, my project Galactic Champagne helped me understand better the origins of wolf rayet stars. These are extremely massive stars in our galaxy, and they tend to form bubble-like shape of gas around them. We see here the gas expanding through space and sometimes it creates a bubble of gas because of the shock wave it creates with the direct interaction of the interstellar medium and dust. And by studying the structure of these bubbles, I was able to understand better the origins of the wolf riot stars. And it, this is extremely important to do because it has a great impact on the dynamic and evolution of stars. then from heavenly bodies in space to our own. And um, the brain has been something which always fascinated me. I've done brain tumor research as well. For Neha Data, this fascination has paid off. Before even arriving here, she got a $90,000 grant to further her studies. Basically what my project has been able to do is identify a new gene and link this gene to dyslexia. Now, I've been able to show that this gene controls something known as the first regressive event. Now, all humans go through this event during the second trimester of pregnancy. And what it does is it controls something called neural pruning, where up to 40% of the neurons are killed off. Now, in dyslexic individuals, this pruning occurs abnormally, and the mechanism controlling it is functioning abnormally, such that dyslexics have a larger right hemisphere than the left. Now, through various biomedical and biotechnological techniques, I was able to determine that this is one of the factors contributing to the first regressive event, and that this gene is one of the factors in causing developmental dyslexia.
With most of these bright young individuals looking for careers in science, this Canada-wide science fair, with its awards and scholarships, is a great place for them to start. When we come.